Alright, so this video basically demos my first successful attempt to create an OmniLink to Ethernet adapter. And uh, as you can see, I've already begun to wire one of these for copper. And it, it took me a few minutes to figure out the method for how to do that efficiently and reliably and it turns out it works really well and uh, after I demo the wiring process I will show it in action. Alright so step one is to get a short little piece of copper wire like this. I have this uh, old spool of uh, stripped solid core copper wire from an uh, ethernet cable that I'm using for my small copper leads. So I'm measuring out about four centimeters of the solid core copper wire. And I'm going to score the wire on both sides. Find that score point and just slide the casing off of the wire. Straighten that out and then uh, snip it off. And there, basically got the, uh, the lead that I'm going to use. So the next step is a little bit trickier. I've got to basically create the stop on the end of the lead. So for that I'm just going to get a pair of tweezers here and put them right on the end of the wire and then gripping firmly just twist that around. And see that gives you this sort of nice little uh, D shape here on the end and uh, I'm going to just twist that a little bit more so it's uh, approximately like that and now I'm going to use pliers to to flatten that out and then twist it over completely so it basically forms this neat little loop and now just to make it conform to the two millimeter uh, spacing that I have in my uh, OmniLink. I'm going to crimp that down a bit. Let's see if I can get that. It's pretty hard to see. But just crimp it down a little so that it takes up a little less space vertically. And so, yeah, that's basically basically what the contact side of the lead looks like and you can flatten out the pliers until it's pretty much perfectly flat <clears throat> so the next next part is uh, threading the lead and uh, that's a little tricky but it's not it's not too difficult so what I'm going to do is first, just because the 3D printing isn't perfect, and even though these holes do intersect properly, um, sometimes they there's a little bit of residue in there, so just going to scrape that out so that it's a nice clean channel. It'll be nice and easy to get that lead in there. And it, it helps a little of course to have these straight and also I like to just curve the end a little bit inward sort of like a hockey stick so that when I feed it into the hole it's going to <clears throat> just slide right in there alright so just gonna slide that in and no problem popped right through nice and easy. Now I'm just gonna keep pulling that through and that's basically the process.
of creating the lead. Of course, in some cases, and like in this instance, it's sticking up a little, so I'm just going to pop that in, pop it down into the groove, so you sort of have the optimal amount sticking out for contact. Of course, because of the way this is designed, the leads actually are going to be basically uh, sitting side by side. <coughs> As you can see, it works perfectly. Alright, now to test the coupling to see if the circuit is actually fully functional. So I pop these two together, and what I have down here is the standard sort of tester that I use for testing my circuits. I prefer a visual indicator, so I have some batteries and an LED. So I clipped the negative terminal onto one side of the circuit, and then this is my... Um, other side of the circuit. So as as you can see it is actually forming a circuit and now to test the reliability of that I'm going to pull these apart and it should go out. Alright and now when I pop that back together it should light up again. So it seems to be fully functional. That's a very good sign for later on when I test this with uh, Ethernet. Alright, so on to the next phase of the project. I just took a standard Ethernet cable, chopped it in half, and removed the cladding from the wires, and then took all the individual subwires and removed a little bit from the end. Next, I'm going to tin those with the soldering iron, and then solder them to the copper connectors on the back of one of these jacks. Yeah, so not too difficult. Uh, not my best soldering job ever. Um, next I'm gonna clad the exposed wires with some electrical tape to provide insulation because obviously the way they are now they're probably gonna come into contact. And um, note that the Ordering of the wires is more or less arbitrary. I'm going with the pattern shown in my notebook earlier. Uh, I just chose to put the solid wires in the middle because later when I'm using those for power as opposed to Ethernet, um, that will put the contacts for those the farthest away from the outside of the jack, which is safest. Everything looks better with a little electrical tape, wouldn't you say? So I clad the wires and I went ahead and threaded in the fiber optics too, so as you can see we've got the light coming through the fiber optic cable in the middle. And that comes from this little white LED I have right here this is about two meters of fiber optic cable and of course the other end of this is a standard ethernet cable so I basically have completed one side of my adapter of course standard ethernet doesn't support fiber optic cabling so that's kind of useless for ethernet but not for fiber optic networking which is one of my fields of interest so the next phase now that I have this completed is to basically test it out <coughs> 